Hello everyone, this is HDSKSKI here. I'm going to be casting the very last game. I am super sad. I cried a little bit. I shed some nerd tears, but it is going to be the last game between Liquid TLO spawning up here in the top center. He is going to once again be the purple Terran. His opponent is going to be Vile Spanishiwa over here on the center right side. And he is the yellow Zerg. The map is Scrap Station. I think this is a map I haven't seen in a little while, just as it's been kind of overshadowed by the GSL maps and things like that. But I really hope that Scrap Station doesn't go, you know, go the way of a dead person into the graveyard because it is the only map released so far that has spawn locations like this with the map designed like this. If you look, I mean, most of you know this map by now, but you have, you have to run around this way and then if you open the rocks, it's a much shorter distance. I really like this style of map. I forget the map that was like this in StarCraft 1. It was really famous, a very old school map that a lot of top players played on and it was really cool. There's a lot of classic games there. I believe it was from WCG when Tasteless first started casting. There was a really epic game on there. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I'm sure that a lot of you do remember that map, but uh, it, it was really, really cool. And I'm glad. I'm just glad that this map is shaped like this. So hopefully, I'm just saying, if they get rid of this map, I hope they replace it with something similar. So right now, the score is 4-2 in Spanishiwa's favor. He hasn't been able to win the last two games. But um, the little one is kind of rallied back together and has, you know, kind of pulled out all the stops just to put on a good show for us here. And um, apparently he says fail. I don't know what I missed. Um, I honestly have no idea. But they are laughing at each other regardless. And the Ovoid is going to scout in here, see exactly what's going on as the flight distance is ridiculously short. I wonder, is this the shortest flight distance or is Metalopolis from this point to this point? Is it a shorter distance than Metalopolis? I don't know, inch for inch, but it is pretty darn close regardless. And you can always see exactly what's going on. He should be able to get this Overlord out of here. I, it's going to be close now that this Marine is about to spawn, especially with the Rally Points being able to be set directly towards that Overlord. So hopefully for Smishiwa's sake, he does not lose this Overlord. Little one is going to attempt to kill it. May be able to kill this Overlord, which would be devastating. So we'll keep an eye on that Overlord. At the same time, we do have a spawning pool on the way for Spanishiwa and just doing that standard opener that he's always done. We do have an Overlord here chilling out by that little floating island. And okay, maybe Spanishiwa will save this. The angle though, the Marine can still run up here to try and get a couple more shots. And there's a second Marine gonna join him. No, barely escapes with that Overlord. Oh my God, that Overlord is sweating bullets. Literally, because he just got shot so many times. What else can he sweat? But he will survive with this Overlord. The one problem with taking that much damage on an Overlord like this is if the little one goes for any air, he will be able to snipe it right away. And also, you usually want to scout around the six to eight minute mark, especially if you're Spanishiwa and you're playing his style of play. Um, and so once you scout with this Overlord, if you decide to, then he's going to have so much less HP that he will get taken out right away. And look at this. This looks like a docking bay that got lowered. I wonder if someone was on that and it just got lowered and they floated off into space forever. Because that is one bad thing about space. If you ever find yourself floating through space, you are pretty much screwed, I would just like to say, because there's no friction. So you just kind of drift off forever. That is definitely not going off on a tangent or anything like that. But regardless, we do have Zerglings on the way. And look at this, two creep tumors on the way for Spanishiwa. And he may be like saying, Husky, why would you say on the way for creep tumors? And it's simply because they are darn good, man. And Spanishiwa gets a lot more queens than most players. You can see two more queens are going to be on the way, which will help him on the defensive end versus whatever comes out of the starport, which if you notice, no Hellions were produced here. And Spanishiwa, the scouting he's doing is so crucial here. He ran up here, saw there's no Hellions on the way. I don't think he saw the starport. I don't think there is a way that he could have seen that. No, just barely missing the vision of that. But he's probably going to know that there is indeed a starport on the way. And uh, he, he knows that there's a very high chance of Banshees. And the reason he knows that, well, he scouted up here, saw no Marines being created, saw nothing coming out of the factory. There was no add-on on the factory. So really that only leaves him with, you know, well, he's probably going for a starport. So he does have the Queens. There's cloaking on the way for the little one. I think that Spanishwa should be prepared for this unless he just didn't add everything together in his head quite yet. Um, it's just that he needs to make sure to get some sort of detection. So either a layer tech or an evolution chamber is exactly what we're going to be looking for here. And so we do have, uh, I mean, the cloaking, it does take 110 seconds. The Banshee itself takes 60. So he does start the cloaking sooner just so that he can get out that as quickly as possible. 
and does have a road torn on the way. This is not looking good for Spanishua. I don't think he realizes exactly what's on the way. He is using a lot of queens. He has five queens right now. He's making two more. It's just the problem is that he needs a lair. So I think he has, how many queens does he have? My God, six queens right now and two more queens on the way. So this will be good versus the Banshees if he can detect them. And he is going to scout up here, does see the add-on. I still don't think he knows about these cloak Banshees. And look at this, the little one is going to be waiting here for just a little bit and uh, should be moving out pretty soon once that cloaking is finished. Now, since his Banshee is done, she's going to be regenerating that energy, making her that much more effective. It's just that Spanishua. There goes the Spore, or the Evolution Chamber. I think this may be a little bit delayed at this point. We'll see if he's able to get it up in time as the Banshees. There's going to be two Banshees which can focus down Spore Crawlers exceptionally easy. And if your positioning is not perfect, then your drones are extremely vulnerable. So the Overlord is going to spot this Banshee moving out. Surprisingly cloaks it a little tiny bit early before getting to the base. Usually you want to cloak it right when they start getting attacked. And these drones now are going to be under attack. The Evolution Chamber is complete, but the Banshee still at 30 energy will be just fine. Look at the amount of creep spread going on here. And Spanishua has so many queens. He doesn't want to reveal the queens if he can help it, but unfortunately he cannot help it. He does not have a layer tech completed. He is working on the score colors. Looks like he's going to focus on just trying to keep his queens alive as long as possible. And then he will, I'm sure, put another sport crawler down here at this expansion as well. The little one's macro is slipping just a little bit. He did dip up to about 300 minerals. I guess it's usually dipped down, but um, it looks like this one Banshee will go down to all these queens. The queens are going to be healing each other, and the Banshees are moving out. And only 15 energy remains on this one. But if we do look at the workers killed, it has been able to kill eight workers. Looks like Spanishwad somehow killed two. Must have been from doing, you know, some sort of killing the scouts and things like that. Now he does have roaches busting down these walls, and he is going to be going against siege tanks, unfortunately, fairly soon. And queens do not count as armored, so they do not take that additional damage versus the siege tanks, but the roaches do. And he wants to delay these bunkers if possible. Um, before his lurk thinks he's going to need more than that to attempt to do that. And this is obviously a game for fun here at the very end. So before this is over, I just want to have a huge thanks to Justin.TV for sponsoring this. And let me know which show match do you want to see next in the comments below. Um, this one has been a lot of fun. I think you guys have hopefully enjoyed it. Just reading through the comments, people have seemed to enjoy it quite heavily. It is my pleasure to bring these to you. And it looks like the little one, look at this, going to the uh, expansion in the top right simply because he knows he's going against Mass Queen here in just a moment. But Queens versus Siege Tanks, this is going to be brutal as that will be a pretty one-sided attack here, I think, from Smishiwa. But he's just trying to have fun here at the very end. We'll see if this Mass Queen's work. We have seen the little one use Mass Queen to great effect in the past. So I don't know if he's going to get a lot of Zerglings yet. He will use Zerglings to supplement this, which is exactly what he needs to do. The plus one range attack is done as well, which does affect Queens. So now they do a whopping 10 damage which is still absolutely nothing, considering his Zerglings do 5 and they attack much quicker. But here comes a potential attack right now. The Creep Tumors have not all been taken out, so there will be Creep right up against these bunkers. Looks like Spanishiwa is ready to pounce. He's at 106 supply to 81. The little one going to be going for a Thor as well as a Viking, but if he would have just had Marine Marauder, he would have been in much better shape. Looks like he's going to be killing these destructible debris over here. The little one will catch wind of this, is going to set up Siege Tanks in position to defend against this, so we'll get one or two shots on these Roaches. Blue. Look at how much damage that does from that splash damage, killing off the Roaches. Spanishiwa needs to back up. No, decides to engage here. Does not have his Zerglings in position, though. He will be able to focus down one tank. The Supply Depot blocking the remainder of this. Look at this wall from the little one. It's not completely enough, but it will hold him off for just a little bit. Now, Thul is here, as well as the Queens just now arriving. Going to be using that Transfuse ability, but Queens are so freaking slow here. It looks like the Spanishua may be in a decent position here to cause some sort of damage, although the little one is now in a defensive posture since he has lifted that off. Spanishua I don't think knows anything about the expansion the top right side. But here comes the attack right now. Going to be attempting to use Transfuse as much as possible. Look at how much damage these Queens have since he got them so early. They can just mass Transfuse each other. They do not do that much damage, though, especially with this Thor here. The little one needs to make sure to repair the Thor as the Thor can really take on all of these units as long as he keeps it alive. I don't know if the Thor is going to hold up, though. Yes, it will. The Thor has seven kills. What a hero Thor able to hold this off. But the transfuses are too much. 
And I still don't know who's going to win this battle. Z-Shakes and Thor are shooting as quickly as possible. But the little one is completely out of money. My god, this attack is actually going to work from Sunishiwa. Now, the little one could turtle at the expansion on the top right side if he wanted to. Sunishiwa does need to be careful, though. If more siege tanks spawn, then the little one may be able to hold here. But this is so many units now that I think Sunishiwa may be able to break this. Once again, just using a crazy, crazy build. The little one is going to GG out of here. The final score is going to be 5-2. All right, wait, I'm doing my math wrong. It is 5-3. Is that, is that right? Am I doing this right? Um, regardless, though, that is awesome. No, it's 5-2. Five, 5-6-7. Five, adding, adding is very hard, guys, so don't make fun of me too much. Um, anyways, so the final score is going to be 5-2. Spanishiwa, definitely the better man in this series so far. Um, or I guess not so far. At the end of the series, he was the better man. So let me know in the comments down below what show match you guys would like to see next. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, go check out Justin.TV. Tell them thank you for sponsoring eSports and sponsoring this show match. And we will make sure they get their money pronto as they have earned it and they have given us amazingly entertaining games. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And I will see you guys next time.